Welcome to our lecture series on lipids. Here we will learn about the beta oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids. In the previous lecture, we discussed the standard beta oxidation pathway for saturated fats. This consists of four enzymatic steps that first creates a trans double bond between the alpha and beta carbon positions. This generates one molecule of FADH2. The second reaction is the addition of water across the double bond to form the beta hydroxy intermediate. The second oxidation converts the alcohol to the ketone, creating beta ketoacyl CoA and one molecule of NADH. The thiolase cleaves the carbon carbon bond between the alpha and beta position creating a molecule of acetyl-CoA and a fatty acyl-CoA, two carbons shorter. So what happens when you have unsaturated fatty acids? How do the double bonds affect beta oxidation? There can be two possible scenarios. One where the cis double bond starts at the odd-numbered carbons, or one that starts between an even-numbered carbon. If it is odd, the beta oxidation rounds will continue until the bond is between the three and the four carbon positions, and then it must deal with the double bond before completing the oxidation process. For even bonds, the double bond moves down until it's between the four and the five carbon position. Let's take a look at the odd situation first. You just need one additional enzyme to deal with an unsaturated fatty acid with the double bond in the odd position. As the fatty acid undergoes beta oxidation, the double bond will move closer to the thioester end of the molecule until it is positioned between carbons 3 and 4. When it reaches this state, the acyl-CoA dehydrogenase will no longer recognize this as a substrate and will be unable to create the double bond between the 2 and 3 position. Instead, an isomerase enzyme is required to shift the cis-3-4 double bond into a trans-2-3 double bond. The isomerase enzyme is called cis-delta-3 enoyl-CoA isomerase, named for the substrate that it recognizes. The isomerase converts the cis-delta-3 double bond to the trans-delta-2 double bond. This is the same exact product as the normal beta oxidation reaction after step one with the acyl-CoA dehydrogenase enzyme. Thus, this reaction intermediate skips the first reaction in the beta oxidation cascade, but it can then pick up with the second reaction in the pathway. Since the first reaction is skipped, it will not produce the FADH2. It will only produce one molecule of NADH during this round of beta oxidation. With the even double bonds, two enzymatic steps are required. When the cis double bond reaches the 4-5 position, it still does not hinder the action of the first enzyme in the beta oxidation pathway. The acyl-CoA dehydrogenase enzyme still recognizes this substrate and will generate a trans double bond between the alpha and beta carbon positions. However, the hydratase in the second step cannot recognize the dienoyl intermediate that is created. This is where the 2,4-dienoyl-CoA reductase does its work. This reduction adds two electrons and two protons to the molecule to remove the two double bonds and replace them with one trans double bond between carbons three and four. With the diene, one hydrogen and one electron are added to the alpha carbon position, and one hydrogen and one electron are added to the carbon five position. An electron from the three carbon and the four carbon each fold inward and create the new double bond between the three and the four carbon position. This intermediate is very similar to the situation that we just looked at with the cis double bond between the carbon three and four position. 
However, this bond is in the trans conformation. Fortunately, the enoyl CoA isomerase enzyme can recognize both of these isomers and convert and convert both the cis and the trans double bonds to the 2,3 carbon position. From here, it can enter back into the beta oxidation pathway. Overall, unsaturated fats contain less energy than saturated fats. This is because they have less carbon hydrogen content than saturated fats. Essentially, they are each losing the FADH2 energy carrier made during the first step of the beta oxidation pathway. Thus, each double bond in the fatty acid lowers the ATP generating potential by one and a half molecules of ATP compared with the ATP potential of a saturated fatty acid of the same length.